The small conservative Islamic country, which is heavily influenced by Sharia law, has prohibitions against alcohol, homosexuality, and public displays of affection. Boisterousness and intoxication, meanwhile, are widely frowned upon. Not exactly a festive atmosphere for a month-long celebration that will draw hundreds of thousands of sometimes rowdy visitors who have different values. The Qataris are expecting 1.5 million visitors to flood the capital of Doha, a city of 2.4 million, beginning in mid-November. To house them, high-rise hotels and apartments have been built, two cruise ships will be docked along the city's waterfront, accommodations in private homes have been secured, and several glamping camps, a combination of glamour and camping that offers a rare desert experience, have been set up. Qatar's tiny size, the country is smaller than the state of Connecticut, means that some of the eight World Cup stadiums are within three miles of one another, while the farthest are separated by less than 50 miles. A sprawling fan fest will be set up along Doha's scenic corniche, or Bayside Promenade, where alcohol will be sold. Budweiser, after all, is among the World Cup sponsors. Alcohol will also be available in designated fan zones outside stadiums and in other hospitality venues, but Qatari officials, who are being lobbied hard by FIFA to expand alcohol sales, have yet to say whether Budweiser products will be available inside the venues. Alcohol sales are typically banned at restaurants not associated with high-end hotels or resorts, although that could also be relaxed during the World Cup. Qatari organizers are working to thread the needle on other issues as well. Although homosexuality is illegal in Qatar and punishable by jail, Nasser al Qatar, the chief executive of the tournament's organizing committee, promised everyone will be welcomed at the tournament. It seems that the Qataris are trying to host people from all over the world who will visit this country for the world championship. Bravo to Qatar. Before we continue with this content, please press the button and subscribe to our channel. It's just a second of your time, and that second means a lot to us. The tournament is a high-stakes gamble for Qatar. The country has spent about $200 billion on new roads, airport expansion, and other projects, including the construction of stadiums, hotels, and a public transportation system. New buildings, hospitals, and other facilities are built. The whole country took on a new look, innovative, modern, and unusual. Many of those projects have been widely criticized by Amnesty International and others for exploiting foreign workers, leading to proposed changes in the kafala or sponsorship program, which binds migrant workers to their employers and gives them few rights. The labor reforms, along with much of the construction that has transformed Doha since the World Cup bid was approved in 2010, were inevitable, many Qataris say. But inviting the world to come to visit for a month greatly accelerated the work and has forced the country to take a hard, critical look at its labor and human rights record. And that, combined with a more nuanced understanding of the country Qataris hope visitors will take home with them, will make up an even greater investment in the future than the anticipated $20 billion in economic activity the tournament is expected to generate. The World Cup is likely to have differential impacts on Qatar. The seminal event promises to provide short and long-term economic benefits and the potential for soft power gains. However, doubt arises over the country's ability to effectively utilize the infrastructure it has built after the event. Additionally, Qatar's treatment of migrant workers has limited the state's foreign policy aspirations. Nonetheless, Qatar has considered these concerns and implemented mechanisms to address them, notably building infrastructure with the intent to be repurposed and introducing region-leading reforms to its migration policies. Qatar's ability to leverage the World Cup to support steady GDP growth and a high degree of security is now contingent on the government following through on its strategic plans and commitments. If these measures are successful, Qatar could avoid the trap of short-lived gains experienced by past mega-sporting event hosts such as Rio de Janeiro. Moving forward, the state will likely continue to host sporting events and implement migration reforms, positioning itself to leave a lasting legacy as a sports and political economic epicenter in the Middle East. While that's the end of the video, we hope you enjoyed it. Before the end, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the notification button so you never miss more videos like this one. Drop us a like and share the video on your social media so you help us get new subscribers. Share your opinion with us in the comments section below. That's it for today. We're glad we were together today. We're preparing something new for you and we'll meet again soon.